So Darren and I were talking just a little bit off camera and with this variable rate fertilizer thing, we could go a lot of different directions. And I just told Darren, let's just talk about this thing just like we would on our farm. Last year was the first year where we really on a big scale did a lot of variable rate fertilizer because- Well, we're I... coming off this huge drought. We're coming yep. off a drought where we had areas of the fields that yielded zero, literally zero. Right. Well, if you've got zero and, yeah. yield and you had applied full fertilizer out there, there's certainly gonna be more carryover fertilizer in those areas than parts of the field that still yielded 200. Right. And that's the whole thing. When we have variable soil types that are that much different, we literally have some sandy areas in fields next to some really good heavy ground. And we've known for years that in those types of areas, there's a dramatic difference. And what we're gonna go to hopefully in the near future is actually be able to plant different varieties even as we cross the field. Then we'll really be able to capitalize on this thing. But even starting with the variable rate fertilizer deal, number one, it doesn't make any economic sense for us in those bad areas that are already loaded up with fertility from the year before to throw a whole bunch more fertilizer on there. And the other thing is we all as farmers have to think about the environment now. So if we we overdo it on fertilizer and that fertilizer ends up somewhere we don't want either in the groundwater or it runs off into a lake or a river that's bad news for everybody it's wasted money and it's just bad for our entire world well we want our yields to double in the next 20 years and the way we're going to do it is with precision agriculture and looking at our fields on a smaller scale so instead of looking at this field as oh it's a 160 acre field we're going to look at it as oh wait let's look at one acre at a time and see what we can do on each acre to improve production. It was kind of interesting. Brand and I were over in one of the former Soviet countries back in 2006, and a farm manager made this comment about this huge field that was like a thousand acres. And we asked how many soil samples he was going to pull, and he said one. And we asked, you know, how are you going to vary the fertilizer across the field? And he said, what are you talking about? I want to manage every field exactly the same. I want to set one plan for the whole farm, and that's how we're going to do everything. On 25,000 acres. Yeah, and we were just talking about how inefficient that was and having a hard time convincing him about that. And then we start looking at our farm of, wow, what if we do grid sampling? What if we manage yep. it on an acre by acre basis? How much better can we do than this guy that's going to farm everything exactly the yeah, same? Yeah, but you use the word inefficient and there are two sides to this inefficiency thing. He can get his plan done faster, but at the end of the year, we're going to make more money. We're going to have a better crop and we're going to do less damage to the environment. So when all that's said, I think that this side is more efficient and that's the direction that we want to go. But a lot of people that I talk to say, oh, it sounds really complicated. I don't know if I can do that myself. I got to hire somebody to come out and, you know, variable rate spread this fertilizer. No, you don't. You probably have the technology to do it on your own farm. So for us in our operation, we do a lot of strip till stuff, for example. And we've got the technology right there. It's in there. We're just not using it. What I find is I travel around the country. I look at guys' new pieces of equipment and I see all this fancy technology. We're not using 90% percent of the technology that's sitting right there. Well, we start talking about all this and I just pull my smartphone out. You know, you think about on your field, you say, oh, it's going to cost me all this money to do it. No, it's not. Get the app. The Soil Test Pro app, for example, is one that we use from farmlogic.com. We go out and do our grid sampling in our field. We send those samples in. The app tells us how to label those samples when we send them into pretty much any lab across the country. And then we get results back with variable rate prescriptions if we want that. It only costs a few bucks an acre. It's pretty inexpensive. And it's something you can do yourself, even if you're a one-man show on your farm. The only thing I would discourage you from doing is really limiting yourself out in your field. So in other words, if you've got basically the same soil type all across and you say, well, that area's been a little less productive, let's just put less on there. Figure out why it's been less productive. What really is going on? Maybe you need more potassium there or more phosphorus or something else. So don't be afraid to invest some dollars to do the thing the right way. Like in our case, where we literally have areas of zero because it's pure sand and not irrigated, that's a whole different deal what we're talking about. So today, more than anything, we just want to motivate you to hopefully start managing your farm on a smaller scale, look at individual areas in your field and figure out really why you're having a problem and what you can do to make that better. Well, it's a lot easier and less expensive to manage the ground you already have than to try to pick up new ground out there. And the other thing is, if you do pick up new ground, it may be because it's got a problem like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.